Okay, today we are going to spend a few minutes with Beep, and we are going to take a look at sequencing tools. So first thing I'm going to do is unlock my patch. You'll notice that I have the basic patch, uh, one of the basic patches we were using last time with the FM oscillator, but I kind of arranged it differently, so it's across the bottom of the patch, so I have a little room for working with sequencers here. I'm going to open up the Beep menu, go to the sequencer category, and I see all of these different sequencer types. Now we're going to just, uh, like we did with oscillators, take a look at some of the most popular ones. The first one is obviously the thing just called the sequencer. It's a nice large format sequencer, and it's got CV that we can use to run into the 1 volt per octave input of our oscillator, and it's got a gate which we can use to drive our envelope. So now we're configured so that this whole thing could run as a self-driving uh, self uh, generative patch. The problem is we need some sort of timing source for the sequencer to run. The sequencer needs one of two kinds of timing source, resources, either a global transport or an external trigger system. We're going to leave it in transport mode right now, but we have to get a way to turn on the transport. So if I go back to my beat menu, again, in the sequencer category, the second item is called global transport. If I drag that over here, you can see it immediately turns on the sequencer because by default the global transport button is on. If I turn it off, it basically shuts off the sequencer, turn it back on again, and I can see the sequencer run. So now let's uh, just slide this over here. <clears throat> let's take a look at a couple of the features of the sequencer. First of all, this top section is a bunch of sliders that allow me to set pitch. Below that is a set of little gate on off switches. So I can turn off individual steps. Now you notice that the pitch still changes when the gate's off. That means that uh, I can control my envelope and my pitch separately. Next, I can control the gate time. What percentage of each step's time the gate is turned on? I can also control the number of steps in my sequence. So here I have a little 13-step sequence now, which is a little different than the kind of stock 8-step sequence we normally get used to hearing. Now, this is all good and fine, but it makes for a very regular static kind of sequence. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the opportunity to control the sequencer externally. And the way we're going to do that is using yet another beat module. In this case, in the sequencer category, it's the very first item on the list called the gate sequencer. What the gate sequencer is, is it's like the lower half of the sequencer. It just outputs gates. There's no CV output here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change up my patch a little bit. First of all, I'm going to take the gate output of the sequencer, gate sequencer, and move it to the trigger input of the regular sequencer. And I'm going to lock my patch, and I'm going to say that the regular sequencer, instead of being controlled by the global transport, is now going to be controlled by the trigger input. Now, when I turn the global transport back on, the only time that the sequencer is actually started is each time the gate sequence fires. So now I can start making interesting rhythms. I'm going to speed up my global transport a little by just scrolling in the transport BPM. Now one of the things that's cool about doing this kind of sequencing is I can have my gate sequencer work with a standard number of steps, in this case 16 sixteenth notes, but I can have my main sequencer be an odd number of steps, in this case 13, which kind of gives me a constantly rotating sequence. So I get a lot of variation 
without a lot of effort or a lot of programming. And then finally, I can turn off the gating on some of my sequence steps to make it even more variant. So we can see with just a few new modules, we can get a vast new set of interesting things to do with our beat patch. And you can just continue stacking this thing, these things up. In this case, I can take another sequencer, drop it in here, leave it in transport mode, but instead of having it control the pitch, the CV control the pitch, I'm gonna have the CV control the filter cutoff. So I run it to CV1 of the filter, lock my patch, turn up the voltage control quite a bit, turn down my initial frequency, and then change up the sequence. And we'll hear now both the filter and the pitch changing when I turn the, the transport on. So you can see, just by adding a few sequencers and by programming some gate triggers, you can really get a lot of variation in your sequencing. I hope that you find this interesting, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.